Hello, everybody. Welcome to another live stream. Thank you so much for either watching this live or watching it once it's archived. I sincerely appreciate that. So, for the entire month of uh, October in 2019, I am doing the Inktober challenge, uh, just trying to ink an illustration every day, limiting myself to about uh, an hour each day. Uh, if I've got extra time, awesome. Uh, frequently, I don't. And uh, so today I'm going to uh, be doing the, uh, the prompt word, I should say, for Inktober today is frail. And what I'm leaning towards doing is a scene uh, influenced by the mummy, uh, which is an awesome, kind of underrated, classic, universal uh, horror movie monster and uh, cool performance by Boris Karloff. Um, definitely uh, disturbing in its own way and one that's been remade a couple times and uh, uh, I, I kind of like the uh, Brendan Fraser remake um, that was that was a decent sort of adventure movie spin on things didn't really care for the Tom Cruise one couldn't get too far into that let's see uh, some folks are jumping into the chat glad to have you thank you Atomicus hello hello to David and CinemaCon Hello, Terry, and hello, Rory. Nice to nice to have you all there. Well, David says he's working on a project for his illustration class. That's awesome. Uh, my evening's going well. Thank you, uh, David. I'm uh, tired. <laughs> There's a frequent uh, thing that you're probably getting burned out hearing from me. Uh, no, it's just been um, just a long work day is all at this point and uh, just adjusting to the time change I, I'm feeling my body feels like it's still on a, a East Coast time right now so it feels pretty late but uh, it's not that late here in, um, in the West Coast Um, yeah, so uh, if you guys have any questions, definitely uh, throw them out. I'm definitely happy to, uh, to answer anything I, uh, I can. And uh, otherwise, I'll just sort of continue with my illustration here and to the best of my abilities. Um, one thing I was able to do in previous years that I haven't really had as much time for is to do a preliminary sketch and have a little more time for uh, uh, blocking things out. Well, that means you get to see a little more of my creative process, but I will admit that I find it um, fairly challenging to uh, come up with a sketch while I'm sort of answering questions and like trying to focus on that aspect as well. Um, so that's something I uh, I wish I had a little more time to do here, but it's all right. The mummy, do I draw from reference? Sometimes, not today. Not, um, I've, I've, I've looked uh, some of these um, past few, you, you know, like uh, the one for Saw, the one for Jaws, uh, that I've done in the past couple of days. I definitely like, you know, took a look at like, you know, um, some photographs to remind myself, but um, I don't have uh, a working light box or anything, so, uh, I actually um, can't really do uh, a lot of reference, if that makes sense. I mean, I can look at something, but uh, I'm not um, I'm not modeling it directly after something. I'm just sort of looking at some uh, some existing reference here and there. This one I'm I'm completely making up out of my head, and we'll we'll see how that goes. Right? We'll see how it goes. Uh, in a minute, I'll switch over to um,
to my inking. Um, just trying to get some of the basics out here. And then I'll uh, continue. But I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, good morning. Oh, what time is it? Your, your time, Seed Hill. The Joker was great, by the way, and, and didn't condone his actions. Uh, yeah, some people think so. I didn't care for it. Uh, Terry did like both Boris Karloff's and Brendan Fraser's take on The Mummy. Never cared for Tom Cruise's version. Totally get it. Totally get it. Mm -hmm. Alright. Let's, uh see what happens if I start uh, inking some of this. Sorry, there's like a little thread there. Okay. Um, I am reading House of X and Powers of Ten. It's quite good. 6.17 a.m. in Scotland. Oh my goodness, it's so early there. So early. Thanks for joining us so early. 1 a.m. in Ecuador. Yeah, that that's, uh, that's the time zone I'm coming from. As of... Uh, like yesterday morning, I started in that time zone and uh, ended it three hours earlier. So uh, I'm I'm tired. I'm gonna switch to uh, Pigma. Which mummy are we doing today? There's so many. Um, overall, I would just say like the uh, the, the the first one. Um, Imhotep, as played by Boris Karloff, is mostly what I'm going for here. As to, like, whether I can portray that accurately, I mean... I'm just sort of trying to also sort of do my own take on it. But, uh, we'll see how it comes out. Hey Jeff, hello James Gleason. Uh, let's see, hello. Let me be honest. How long do you think until House of X ends? Because I think it might be too late to jump on. House of X is already wrapped up. Powers of Ten's last issue comes out tomorrow. Any thoughts on Gwenpool? Um, haven't really read any Gwenpool actually. Like I've had somebody explain to me what what the idea is. It sounds fun and and cool and funny, but uh. Sorry, I haven't I haven't read any of her stuff yet. I'm trying to think if I've got any uh stories to tell from the day. Uh I had mostly really nice customers today, made a bunch of sales, uh, so today was a good work day. Uh, always kind of nice to, to do well at work when you come back after several days off, you know, just get you right back in the swing of things. It felt good, felt real good. But uh, how about you guys? How was your day? Anybody that had anything exceptional happen to them, speak up. Let us know what we're uh, what we're missing. They're showing the mummy on Svenguli. Oh, cool! This weekend. Hello, Rother. Uh,
it's gonna be tricky to um, find a way to like represent the mummy sort of accurately but also creepy my thinking is just I'm gonna go a little more frail than than typical and just sort of emphasize the, the wrinkled lines and the the wear and tear the ravages of time hopefully I can get some of that across it's in my head right now will I get it across? I don't know forgot to bring a water exceptional Oh, an average day? An average day is better than a bad day. Uh, Sheldon ate some leftover cake. That's not bad. I was going to ask about your day, but you covered that. Glad you had great customers. That's always nice. Yeah, I uh, I bought three cars for the company today, which is a lot. And I uh, I sold one. And uh, any day you sell, sell a car is a good work day in my line of work. How was... New York Comic Con. Uh, New York Comic Con was fantastic. I, I had uh, probably my my favorite New York Comic Con, uh, mostly just because a lot of people seemed to recognize me, uh, which wasn't a hundred percent expecting. At least not on the scale that uh, it it happened, and uh, that was pretty awesome to see that the channel is uh, has grown like that. Uh, that that people are watching, um, both fans and um, industry. Uh, pros so yeah that was really really nice I'm still like kind of buzzing about all that um, people are like oh don't let it go to your head I'm like I don't know that I can let it go to my head if I've been like you know working it doing a weekly show for over three years and like I had like one single day where a bunch of people recognize me that, that isn't quite gonna change my life uh, I don't think I'm going to all of a sudden become some jerk because I had one good day. But I guess you never know. What you got for us today, Chris? I got, uh, got the mummy. I'm uh, going to be sort of sneaking up on some sort of tough guy. He's not, he's not Brendan Fraser, but I, I'm definitely sort of thinking of that, like, you know, 1930s adventure uh, kind of character that I'm illustrating here and uh, in my view that this isn't uh, an adventurer who's going to last long because he's uh, not going to be looking behind himself I imagine he uh, he's one of the dum-dums that helped uh, open this cursed uh, sarcophagus and he's about to about to meet a grisly end for his troubles but he'd have the look of being uh, a leading man, a hero he could be forgiven for thinking he was going to be the hero of the story but he's just a little too brash and cocky for his own good and I'm going to just try to have fun throwing in a uh, a mummy in the background. Famous monsters. Hmm. Pretty cool. Um, I'm not reading Deceased. Did anybody uh, like it? Yeah, the Bo Boris Karloff one is the one I'm like sort of basing this on. I just realized you guys can't really see this too well. I'm going to have to zoom in. I can't believe anyone was putting up with that. Let's see. Let's go in there. And... Uh, I need to get a better high resolution camera. I really do cuz this is not this isn't quite high resolution. It's it's like fuzzy. Ah, that's frustrating. No, I've never seen the TV show called Mummies Alive. Sorry. Boy, that is really frustrating that like that that's coming out like that. 
I didn't realize quite how bad the resolution was till just now. I need new, all sorts of new equipment. I know. I, I need better audio equipment. I need better lighting. I need better resolution cameras for stuff like this. But even though the channel's taken off, it's really not like it's not making me rich or anything close to it. So it's really hard to uh, get to the point where I can easily afford that stuff. Um, but trust me, I know that I need to. Um, all I can do until then is just sort of the best I have with the tools available. Uh, and uh, and hope for your patience and as soon as I can afford something nicer I will get it how much does a high-res camera cost you know that's a great question I don't really know I don't I haven't really uh, I haven't really looked into it that's a wonderful question you know I'm Probably the first thing I'll do is get myself like a nicer camera for like the show itself, which is like the thing I'm using up here is just like you know a webcam. Uh, well, and, th and then this one that, that that's like showing me it's just like uh, literally for like a dollar fifty. That thing's a dollar fifty. This one's like got a little bit better resolution than that one, believe it or not. The the only reason I look okay in this is because it's a very small box but it's not showing a very good color like it is actually brighter here and it's not doing a good job because like I always have it like well lit here and it can never do a very good job with the contrast maybe you should aim at the sound first jeez thanks <laughs> I'm trying man all I can say is I'm trying uh, piece by piece I'll try to improve the show and Uh, thank you for so much for the show. Oh, you're welcome, Flop Whopper. Thanks for watching. What kind of camera do you use for the episodes of the show? Uh, good question. Um, it's a Sony. It's it's a high res camera, but it's not a DSLR. I, I can't remember the name of it. It's like something like a handy cam. Um, I think I'd rather upgrade that. Than, than like you know sound because I think of like if I had a nicer camera it might be able to capture uh, sound I don't think Johnny the homicidal is out of print um I had a link in the description of my episode that will take you to Amazon to get it thank you uh, Asmin I'm sorry I haven't been able to do um, opening gags like the uh, last two episodes it's really just been mostly a matter of time uh, the opening gags are the last thing I do before I uh, you know complete an episode I or, or at least the last thing I write um, and I just uh, have been under the gun deadline wise on them it's tough to just get an episode complete uh, in time this last week because of course I was in New York for a bunch of it so I had to like sort of record it earlier than than typical and edit it like you know while I was in the air and while I was at a hotel and stuff like that trying to get other stuff done too you know if this guy isn't uh, quite as noble and everything as his neck the, the next guy I think I'm gonna have to give him a little pencil thin mustache yeah and some harsher angles but I'll try to give him kinda nice eyes he needs a handsome feature 
that's taken him this far through life. <laughs> All right, uh, Omega says, I'm a big fan of Jason Todd, and some time ago I read about how a couple DC writers made hints about hit how he was molested when he was a kid. Uh, I don't know anything about that, to be honest. I don't know anything about that. Hello, Sheldon. Hello, no, no, no. I like this stupid mustache I just gave him. What other questions? Rory, thank you so much for the super chat. Let's see. Little something to help out. Ever think there'll be an episode on Denny O'Neill's The Question? I think it's entirely possible. I think Denny O'Neill is somebody that I've sort of um, referred to here and there um, when I've talked about guys like Neil Adams. Um, and, uh, and and I know he's come up in other areas too. Um, but I haven't like necessarily addressed him as a creator. I feel like I, you know, I've, I've referred to him as an editor, and I've referred obliquely to his uh, time as a uh, writer, but but never directly. Um, yeah, the question could make a good TV show, definitely. Uh, who's he supposed to be, Anthony Stark? No, 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 not necessarily, but I could sort of see that. I think I just gave him way too big of a forehead, though. Let me, um, that, that this doesn't work. Let me uh, bring this this hair in a little bit more. Yeah. He can have a big bushy mop top, but he doesn't he didn't need it to be twenty feet high in his forehead. Alright, now we'll just jump back to uh, some more of the mummy, the the star of our piece. And I'll just jump back and forth and we'll try to see if we can make a little bit of a scene within the time that we have tonight. like he should have a few really loose uh, bandages so that his arms uh, are free. Anthony Stark searching for the mummy's tomb for vibranium. Yeah. Denny O'Neill wrote the story where Batman fights a shark. Yeah, I've uh, discussed that one on my uh, show, uh, especially in my episode about uh, the Joker. Uh, that's called The Joker's Five-Way Revenge. And uh, Denny O'Neill was very, very uh, important figure in making the Joker a threat again. He'd been sort of a goofy prankster for a... Uh, 
very long time in the comics, and uh, Denny O'Neill brought him back in a big way as a threat. And uh, it was a, it's a great, it's one of my favorite Joker stories. It's probably my overall favorite Joker story, uh, now that I'm thinking of it. Um, Frank Miller, of course, used him pretty well in uh, Dark Knight Returns. Um, death in the, a Death in the Family is quite good. The Living Mummy. Yeah, is The Living Mummy a Marvel villain? I'm trying to remember exactly what The Living Mummy was. Why do you, what do you think about small indie editorials trying to make superhero universes emulating Marvel or DC? Don't you think that trying to take this much, to make this much nowadays is too difficult? Um, it, it seems hard to successfully accomplish. Um, doesn't seem like, uh, if, you know, you, you can't force it. Marvel and DC, neither of them were forcing it. You know, it took a long time before they really did a, much in the way of, like, you know, crossovers. And uh, even after they started crossovers, the idea of, like, a completely interconnected universe took a lot longer to, to develop. Um, so it's... All I can say is you, if, if that's what you want to do, you have to just take your time at it. You really have to take a long time to set it up properly. And that's another. That's the same reason why a lot of these uh, sort of crossover ideas for, for movies don't work. They're just trying to rush everything, like trying to insert a bunch of world building instead of just first tell a good story. The first Iron Man didn't focus too much on world building. There were like a couple things that worked more like Easter eggs that later they were able to pay off, you know. So you can put in some like Easter eggs, um, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like it was Nick Fury running around trying to recruit uh, Tony Stark that whole movie. It was this new character called Phil Coulson. And so like, you know, it wasn't distracting and it wasn't like an overt reference to stuff that we all knew like oh okay uh, that guy knows spider-man and this guy worked with captain america it, it, it didn't waste its time it took its time those first several marvel movies and you go back go back and look at the box offices on them and a lot of them were only like okay nowadays they can print money on anything but it took a long time for marvel to get to where it was Every, people need to be patient Hey, James Stutton. The Living Monolith was an X-Men villain. Sorry, I was thinking The Living Mummy was The Living Monolith. You're 100% you're right. The Mummy didn't really work as a comic. Okay. Let's zoom it just out a little bit. I feel like it's maybe zoomed in a little too much. That's a little better. You have $20 million, but you can only use it to make comics. What do you do? Um, I make comics? Is that a trick question? I, I, don't, I don't get it. I make my own comics. What other good questions are there tonight? The Living Mummy was published during Marvel's monster phase. I guess I don't remember him very well. Kind of wish Disney allowed the demon in a bottle storyline, but I know that wouldn't have agreed with their family-friendly goal. Um, maybe. I don't think that they, they're, they'd be too against it, but I think it was like... I think it's... 
it's something you could do on TV that's much harder to accomplish in the short running time of a movie. Um, you can, if you're going to tackle alcoholism in a movie, it doesn't leave room for for pretty much anything else. You know that there, there's only so much character growth you can do within a superhero movie, as well as have them do the traditional superhero stuff of like fighting bad guys and, and being heroes. Uh, Demon in a Bottle was like only allowed to work because it was like you know episodic, and all things considered, it was pretty short abbreviated take on like you know one man's battle with alcoholism um, it's definitely informed some good character backstory but um, I can understand how it was very hard to think about accomplishing that within one movie's running time when you're, you've got lots of competing goals for like what to accomplish within that like two hours roughly What other questions? John Buscema used to draw the best Conan. No, no question. Wouldn't mummies technically be zombies? Um, not really, because it's like it's more of like a curse on like one person, and it involves uh, gods, and they have regeneration abilities. Those are all pretty different than like what zombies are. They're not just reanimated corpses. There's more to it than that. Good question, though. Thinking about the differences between some of these monsters. Marvel tried all sorts of horror comics at one time. Yeah. Thoughts on Marvel Zombies? Um, Marvel Zombies was pretty fun. I thought Kirkman did some really cool stuff with it. Um... I think he explored pretty much everything worth exploring with it, and then Marvel kind of kept going, but that's just me. I'm biased. Dual comic tropes about all of Marvel's horror characters. Um, I can't this year. My patrons have already voted on what comics they want me to cover for, for spooky month. But um, I might be able to do it next year. We shall see. It's a good idea. Um, the patrons have spoken. They did. Uh, do I follow War of the Realms? I didn't. Sorry. Uh, Tomb of Dracula. Yeah, Tomb of Dracula is totally good. Tomb of Dracula is one I, I definitely considered reviewing uh, last year and this year. Um, and I'm sure I'll get to it at some point. I, I, I'd like to do an episode where I talk more about Gene Colan's work. I think I touched on it a little in my uh, Daredevil episode that I 
talk about uh, Matt's twin brother, Mike Murdoch. Uh, but I'd love to do some more there. Yeah, Gene Colan definitely drew, drew a great Dak Dracula. Um, powerful, like ferocious, a lot to like about it. Blade was introduced in Tomb of Dracula. He sure was. Um, Terry says that uh, it's a good idea to do an episode on Gene Colan. Thoughts on the new Spider-Man run? Uh, the artwork by Ryan Otley is definitely gorgeous. Uh, I think he's a great artist uh, selection for, for that title. It makes a lot of sense. The current run on Savage Sword of Conan is worth checking out. Is that still got uh, artwork by uh, Mahmoud Asrar? Because, man, that dude's talented. Uh, is there a moment in a horror comic that disturbed you so much you couldn't stop thinking about it? Uh, several moments in any of Junji Ito's work. I think that his work definitely disturbs me. Um, he's got the creepiest visuals of anyone I can think of. But I'd be curious also to hear um, if any of you out there have been disturbed by a uh, horror comic. Either the visuals or the storyline. Another one that stands out is like, you know, disturbing to me was, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but if you go back and watch my episode on uh, EC horror comics, it's all about a guy stranded on an island that like tries to eat a... Uh, rap it's like eating a seagull uh it's really disturbing thoughts on the thing from another world comics from dark horse from the early 90s uh didn't read them sorry sounds interesting did not catch them
I guess I'm, um, I must be tired tonight, guys. I feel like I'm not talking too much. My apologies there. Um, definitely like to, to be more engaging. Just having a really hard time, uh, I think, thinking quickly. Um, so don't have lots of uh, topics on my own. And uh, I'm happy to answer questions. So feel free to ask any of those that you can uh, think of. And uh, I'll do my best to, to answer them. All the old issues of Eerie and Creepy? That's quite a collection. I remember Weird War Tales. That was pretty good. It's a Conan comic where a girl looked into a box, he told her not to, and she turned into eyeballs. Well, that'll happen. That'll happen. Oh, Patrick Zercher is uh, doing the current Conan book. Okay, gotcha. Um, I saw somebody else was asking about Deceased, but I, I haven't read it, so I don't have any uh, big thoughts on that one right now. Sorry. don't read a lot of current comics, uh, and it's uh, definitely nothing against them. Uh, it's, it's really just a question of uh, time and money. Um, because I'm making so many episodes of Comic Tropes, it actually means that uh, I have surprisingly little time to read... Uh, new comics definitely try to stay abreast of uh, what's going on but um sometimes just too too busy and uh i go okay have to read that one down the road So after all, it was you who had to keep reading comics. I read every day. Like, I read some comics every day. I just uh, can't keep up with uh, lots of comics these days. Um, I read them, like, in, you know, when it's well-reviewed or getting a lot of publicity, I'll, like, you know, make time to read, like, a uh, compendium or trade paperback, something like that. No, I don't know anything about Black Mage or Super God. Sorry, folks. What artists do I think influenced your art style? Um, if I'm being honest, uh, let's see. Frank Miller, John Romita Jr., Will Eisner. Um, um, when I was really young, Todd McFarlane. Um, but I think that kind of worked its way out. Um... And a lot of my contemporaries, guys like, you know, um, Tony Moore, Corey Walker, Nate Belgard, Matt Roberts, um, just seeing the amazing things that they could do and uh, just trying to figure out what they did right, like just trying to emulate what they did right, uh, definitely influenced me a lot. Got plans to watch the Witcher series? Um, yeah, I'll watch it when it hits Netflix, as long as I still have Netflix. Um, I am planning on covering the Witcher comics. Um, I'm in the process of getting them translated.
I'm going back to the uh, original comics from Poland. So sometimes when I do these translations, it takes a while. And then, of course, as soon as I do it, people will just uh, make quick videos based on my translations. But that's okay. Working on a bunch of uh, foreign comic translations right now so that I can um, hopefully review them sometime in the near future. Um, got some really fun ideas in there. Um, I got some good responses off of translating those um, Mexican Spider Man comics. Uh, so, definitely going to work on doing some more of that. And it's always fun to represent other areas of the world and see like how they approach comics so that we can see like you know what the common techniques are and what different countries try to do differently uh, this time last year I was reviewing Dylan Dog a, a famous uh, Italian comic that was a lot of fun and uh, yeah so I like uh, doing foreign comics from time to time what's the cat's name such a chatty boy uh, that's actually a girl that's Chibi that's that's talking so much hey Chibi Jibby, you want to come over here? You're getting famous. People are curious why you're talking so much tonight. Um, she just wants attention. That's all. And, uh, you know, I'm down here, but I'm not, like, playing with her. So she's, like, a little confused. Why? Like, you know, it's like, what's up, human? Why, why are you down here but not doing anything with me? I'm sorry. Am I ignoring you? This is my old girl. She's, uh, how old are you now, baby? Hmm? Let's think it through. How old are you? I think she's, she's 15. This kitty's 15 years old. Thank you. I, she's very relaxing. I'm definitely a, uh, a cat guy. Um... My cats relax me. Hmm. All I want to do right now is lay down and, and pat the kitty and, and relax. It's been a long day, but oh, it's good to force myself to uh, sit down and, and draw. Even if it doesn't come out well, um, I, I learned something. And if it comes out well, then I really learned something. Right? Right? She's tired. She just wanted attention. She's really little. She's skinny. Chibi, um, Chibi was little when I adopted her, so that's why I named her Chibi. Cute Japanese word for tiny. And, um, she got some meat on her bones when she was, like, in her prime, but, um, she developed diabetes, which is apparently something cats can do from time to time. And so uh, she had to take insulin shots uh, every 12 hours, and I had to change her diet. So she got kind of skinny. She got kind of skinny, cause, uh, uh, gave her plenty of, of the food that she could eat, but overall she's a skinny little kitty. And uh, I think it sort of aged her a little bit. I think there was a Mexican luchador who wrestled in a Spider-Man mask. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Chibi here also had a seizure once, and I think that, like, ever since then, you know, her legs have been a little weaker than they used to be. She'll still jump up onto high uh, things when she feels like it, but... Anyway, she's just getting up there in years... But she's the first kitty I ever adopted for myself. Everything else was like, you know, a family pet. This was the first cat I ever got myself as an adult. And she's been with me for a long time through a lot of different houses. She's a really good friend. All right, why don't you go down and play? Go play with your brother. Yes, yes, meow, meow. She still wants to talk and play. She 
think she just misses me from like me being away in um New York for for several days, which is cute. But come on, cat. I got a life here. Thanks for bearing with me as I took a moment to uh, try to calm her down. She probably missed you a lot. Maybe, but um, I'm, I'm lucky. Uh, Chrissy's mom uh, house sits for us, and she is fantastic about taking care of our cats. You know, she really sits down and relaxes with them and pats them a lot. She, she's so... She's like the best pet sitter ever she she uh she's really amazing and uh, we're we're really lucky it means i can go on my trips my vacation and, and not worry you know i just know that they're in great great hands um, it's a huge relief anyone out there that has pets and is like you know had to deal with pet sitters or crating or boarding and stuff definitely knows the uh the advantage of having a good pet sitter Cats are wonderful. Do you have any favorite comic strips? Um, yeah, I do. Calvin and Hobbes. That's fantastic, man. That's one, one of my favorites. I mean, that was just one that I grew up with. Uh, the Far Side legit makes me laugh. I think The Far Side is incredible. Uh, those, so those were two that I always really liked uh, growing up. Um, what else did I like? Uh, Robot Man which I think became Monty, and I'm not sure if it's still around or not, because I just don't read the comic strips and papers these days. But that was legit funny. Robot Man made me laugh out loud. And you know what's frustrating? That doesn't seem like it's ever been put really into um, print. There's so many comic strips that you can find that that are constantly in print certainly you can't get away from garfield but i can't find robot man really like that one bloom county yeah bloom county's rock solid uh do not care for marmaduke don't care for wizard of id prince valiant uh yeah prince valiant um and it's uh, Prime by Hal Foster. Amazing artist. Uh, amazing. Back in the day, you know, that's where the real money was, was comic strips as compared to comic books, because everybody read the newspaper, so huge circulations, and uh, that translated to uh, big paydays for artists that could work on the comic strips. Any thoughts on Bill Waterston's retirement? Um, I get it. Like, you know, he'd, he'd made a fortune off the comic strip, and he said everything he wanted to say, so what's the point in hanging around and belaboring the point? I, I respect it. It kept the quality and uh, up, you know? I mean, Peanuts was amazing for a long, long time. But by the time I was reading it as an adult, like, or even a teenager, maybe I should say, Peanuts wasn't that funny to me anymore. It was just kind of repeating the same gags. It was lots of comic strips way, way, way overstay their welcome. I don't know why papers don't just cancel them and try to get something awesome. But what do I know?
<sighs> Would I ever consider a video on Trans Metropolitan? Absolutely. Garfield used to be great too. I don't know. I look back. I, you know, when I was a kid, I thought that things like Dilbert and Garfield were that funny. I look back and I don't know. None of it really makes me laugh. Like, maybe it's only funny when you're a kid. Because I did re think, remember thinking they were funny, but none of it holds up for me. None of, like, Dilbert or Garfield specifically. Ziggy was never funny. Popeye had a lot of merchandising at one time. Popeye is, or Thimble Theater, and eventually Popeye was a pretty awesome comic strip, in my opinion. Like that one, that one was cool. The stuff by original creator E. C. Seeger. Yeah, that's that's a good one. What's funny is, like, you look back at, like, the um, comic strips that were, like, really, really popular, um, like, in, you know, the 20s and 30s and even earlier, and it's funny how many of them, like, basically the joke is just people sort of talking weird. I think that, like, that used to just be the source of huge comedy, like, whoa, that guy's got an accent, and that was, like, just considered, like, a really good joke. <laughs> it's, like... These days, you're like, it's not really much of a joke. Some people just have speech impediments or they sound a little strange. It's not exactly a joke. <laughs> Back in the day, that, that counted as a joke. Popeye was one of the first vegans. Was he a vegan? I mean, I know he ate spinach, but I didn't. Re he never caught like fish or anything. He's a sailor. Those old strips eventually just become too big to fail. I guess. Have you ever watched the Dilbert cartoon show? I sort of remember that. It was on something like. What was it on? It was on uh, whatever was around before the CW, not the WB. It was on UPN, I think. And had a voice by uh, one of those guys that was in uh, Home Alone and stuff like that. UPN, yeah. UPN. Steamed spinach is gross. I like spinach, but yeah, I don't think steamed spinach is much of a treat. Uh, do I have a remover? Yeah. I don't know, I feel like this drawing's getting away from me a little and it could be a product of trying to uh, do this without much of um, an under sketch before I, uh, you know, like there wasn't much of a sketch before I just started laying into the ink. Oh well. It's not that it's bad, it just feels... I should have, like, come up with a more dynamic pose for this mummy. Given him more space.
Guy doesn't notice a full-grown mummy sneaking up on him. Well, the mummy moves slowly and quietly. And he's looking around the corner. So, yeah. I, in my opinion, a, a guy could get snuck up on by a mummy. He's cocky. He made a mistake. He's going to get himself killed and absorbed by a mummy. What a dummy. Get killed by a mummy. Hey, I'm rhyming. Whoops. Didn't even mean to. That's how good I am. Come up with raps without even trying. Chameleon mummy. Uh, this one's not really going anywhere. If you were to learn a second language, what would you choose and why? Uh, Japanese. I just enjoy being in Japan and I'd love to be able to uh, more fluently uh, converse with uh, the locals and uh, get around town that way instead of sort of being a crappy tourist that like you know gets by with everybody else speaking the language after that um, just to be more fluent in Spanish like I supposedly learned to be in college but I don't know <laughs> I don't feel like I know Spanish that well Mummy looks like Beavis. Yeah, maybe. It's not that great. I think I'll just sort of chalk this one up to it. Uh, got away from me. I don't. Uh, it's it's okay in parts, but I don't think there's anything I can really do to salvage it and make it amazing. So uh, since I drew for an hour, I'll call that like you know another success in terms of completing Inktober. And just um, tomorrow, I uh, am working my morning shift at work, so that means I'll be home earlier. Might be able to stream at more like 7.30 Pacific time instead of 10. The hair turned out amazing. I feel like I can do hair pretty well. Yeah. Um, it was fun chatting with everybody. It's really late. It's really late, so that leads to a smaller chat room. I love talking to everybody that, that came in. Um, and... Uh, I love talking to all of you. Um, I just wish I sometimes had more time to either like sort of pre-plan so that I could focus a little more on the inking and then just uh, focus a little bit more on um, on the chat room as well. So what I'm going to aim to do on a personal level tomorrow is just um, I'm going to sketch during my during my lunch break so that tomorrow I have like a good base like I have a good drawing base and then I can focus more on the inking techniques and that also frees up a little more bandwidth in my mind to focus on you the chat room and uh, answer questions in that way so um, you know this this just tells me okay you know this is what I could do in an hour with like no pre-planning it's okay excuse me but if I have more time I know I can do a lot better personally. Tomorrow's prompt is swing. So to me, if I'm gonna stick with like a horror theme, that, that, that feels like, you know, a swinging ax, a swinging pendulum, a, you know, a swinging uh, punch. There's a lot of different things I could do with a swing uh, for something like that. So that, that's cool, that, that's nice and broad. I like, I like a nice broad prompt. Uh, we'll see where it takes me. Grim Reaper, maybe. Maybe. First thought was Negan. Yeah, swings his bat. Whew, I am yawning. That means I'm really tired. I'm so sorry. That's like kind of rude to like do on camera and it's probably making some of you yawn. Um, that That is like a legit thing where if a person yawns and you see or hear it, you're going to want to yawn without meaning to. Guy on a swinging noose. There's a lot of different ways I could go there. Gallows. Um, yeah, so that's kind of fun. Maybe not my personal favorite result, probably not my worst, but uh, yeah, I think I just need to be able to have some more time to do a, a preliminary drawing when possible. Uh, I feel like I produce better results when I can refine it, because what my process normally is, is um, sketching a bunch of like little thumbnails, finding one that I like, drawing it like kind of bigger, and then like light boxing it and using like my pencil to find just the essential lines and then ink that.
Phantom of the Opera? What's that got to do with swinging? I, I, I don't remember the story that well. Does he like... Does he live on a swing? Is that what it was? Phantom of, an, of the Opera might have lived on a swing. All right. Um, enough, <laughs> enough just talking. I'll try to come back with some stories and some impressions tomorrow and hopefully a good drawing. In the meantime, appreciate everybody joining me. And um, what is it that I like to say? Oh, yeah. Keep reading comics or else. <laughs>